Welcome again, everyone, to TV 3101. This is part two with Stan Clark. We've talked about a lot of things already from his first job of bagging rocks to finding out how man landed on the moon. Some very interesting stuff talking to Stan Clark. When I came to town, the building behind me here, that was, that was the whole restaurant. That was what this place was. It's obviously grown infinitely since then. We get a chance to talk this week to Stan about the job and about the business itself. Eskimo Joe's, was it always Eskimo Joe's? Where did the name come from? And why did it become a restaurant? Well, thank you. How, how, about, how about the original name? The original name Eskimo Joe's from the very beginning. Yes, sir. Um, again, my, my original partner, Steve File, gets all the credit. I don't know where he came up with it, but he pulls this name Eskimo Joe's out of his hat. And I'm just like, Steve, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> Eskimo Joe's. Not Steve. You know what? Steve, not well, what are we doing here? Well, I just, you know, I, I, I liked it because it rhymed. The, es the Mojo sound, I kind of liked that. You know, it was so bizarre. I thought, well, people maybe would remember it. You know, I had. Hey, listen, I was kind of a marketing guru. I had three hours of marketing you know, <laughs> at 22. But, um, but anyway, the name was going to stick because every time it even got brought up, all of our friends would join this chant, Eskimo Joes, Eskimo Joes. And okay, I get it. We're calling it Eskimo Joes. Um, but from my principal's class in marketing, I didn't remember logos. And I said, well, we've got to come up with a logo. Yeah. And a freshman commercial arts student who was a friend of Steve's younger brother, you know, he sketches Eskimo Joe and Buffy, only one he ever rendered, the first and only one. He actually rendered it sitting right in the front window of Joe's. Wow. Art pad, you know, yay big. And this is before we even opened. And I walk in, I go, oh, that's it, I love it. What do you think, Steve? And he goes, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, anyway, the rest is history there. I mean, that logo, that boy and his dog, that universal theme, that yeah. great big smile. Yeah. I didn't know all that when I saw it. I just liked it. But, you know, in hindsight, 43 and a half years later, it's yeah. still working. You know, it, <laughs> it's, it had a lot going for it. So what, what was the, so from that point to the, to FK now, you know what, this is working really well. You know what we also ought to do? Let's add some food to this thing. Let's <laughs> add some t-shirts to this thing. Ha, ha, where, where did the, the brainstorm of all that come from? Well, we were very fortunate. Some guys opened a screen printing business the same summer we opened. They came by and they hit us up about printing t-shirts before we ever got open. We had t-shirts for sale day one. Wow. And we ordered 72 of them. Man, I'll never forget this. Three dozen were light blue and three dozen were kind of a goldish yellow color. We printed them in one color, a navy blue print on them, and we sold every one of them the first week we opened. It's incredible. Couldn't even believe it. And, uh, of course, what we knew was that was going to conjure up word of mouth advertising. Sure. People are going to see it. They're going to ask about it. So we're just thrilled about that and uh, very exciting. They were very expensive. They were $3.75, and you got a free beer with them. <laughs> of course, I already told you what a beer was worth, 30 cents. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but absolutely. Still, so, it was so, we, we, so the But you didn't get a plastic, 20-ounce plastic cup at that <laughs> no, yet, did you? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. That, that's getting a little, that would have been way too much. So, so from that point, I mean, the, what made the T-shirt sell from day one? Well, I think it was just that logo, that that just that boy and his dog. It just drew you in. They were really cute, you yeah. know. And, and I remember there was one young lady, an art student, that came in every afternoon, and she'd sit up in one of the front windows, and for a dollar, she would paint Buffy's tongue red. <laughs> That's where we got the <laughs> idea of making the logo multicolored. She was making more on the shirts than we were. <laughs> Wow. But that was so cute, and uh, but I don't know. People just liked them. They bought them. And yeah. so and so, you know, I I, I kind of <laughs> laugh about the, uh, the you know the the twenty ounce plastic cup, but I mean, if you open my counter right now, <laughs> there's a little bit of glass, and there's ninety nine percent of Eskimo <laughs> Joe's cups that are sitting in my cabinet. I mean, that too, letting people take their cup, finishing. Well, obviously, can't have certain things taken out of the out of the restaurant, but. Taking their cup in a commercial, right. I mean, it seems so simple, but it was brilliant. Well, I'll tell you what, I owe, I owe that whole idea to Jim Swimper. Uh, Jim was our uh, beer distributor for many, many years at Boardsman Beverage, and, uh, you know, he found that 22-ounce fluted cup that, that, you know, the Joe's cup that we all know, hopefully, but uh, just 
just an unbelievable blessing. And we have gone through a few million of those. Well, and I, and I obviously undersold it. It's a 22 ounce? Yeah, 22. I thought it was a 20 ounce. See, what, that tells you what I know. That one goes back to, to 40. So that one's getting old right there. That was, Yeah, that's, that's, that's a 40. Nearly, that's nearly four years old, right? Yeah, getting, yeah, getting close. I mean... Of course, there's there's all the magic. Right that, there there, there is the magic up. right there, and that was there from day one. From day one, yeah. What's in this circle has not changed. At is all. that right? Has not changed at all. And so <laughs> that that marketing student wanted any uh, residuals. <laughs> <laughs> His name was Bill Thompson, a freshman commercial art student. Like I said, he did it on an art pad with a magic marker. That's why it recreates so well in one color. Was because of the way it was designed, and um, but, you know. I really liked it. I thought it was worth 50 bucks. <laughs> Steve said, how about 35 <laughs> That's great. We cut him a check for 35 bucks, and you know. Have you tried TS4 yet? They have great meals being served weekly on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. But I want to tell you about their incredible Sunday lunches. Every Sunday from 11 to 2, you can drop in at TS4 at White Barn Estates for a lunch like Grandma used to make. The menu changes weekly, but it includes selections like fried chicken, roast beef, meatloaf, and all the fixings. No reservations needed, special pricing for kids, and a great home-cooked meal at TS Fork. And while you're there, check out the gift shop with Made in Oklahoma products and items you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at tsfork.com. To all of our neighbors, friends, the people we see every day, we come to you today with no news or announcement but to let you know what's on our hearts. Because quite simply, we feel honored. You're the reason that what we do is so much more meaningful than a job. The reason we believe in the power of investing in tomorrow. But you're also the reason we believe in the power of sharing the same neighborhoods and a loyalty that's bigger than any challenge. So this is simply thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to move forward and grow, but never lose sight of the roots that connect us. As we step boldly into a time of change and innovation, consider this our promise that every investment in our hospital is an investment in our communities. Because you're the reason we love what we do and love where we live. The McCafe is now featuring cold brew coffee and cold brew frappes. Face the day with a cold brew coffee from the McCafe with a rich cold brew coffee blended with ice for a creamy frozen drink that's colder than cold brew. Or refresh with a cold creamy frappe. We start with a cold brew coffee blended ice and topped with whipped cream and rich chocolate drizzle for a great anytime frozen treat. McDonald's in Stillwater, Perkins, Perry, and Cushing. I'm loving it. Kent and Barbara Houck have been saying they're a one-stop shop for many years. In 1951, the Houck Agency began insuring Oklahomans and since has expanded to insure people in 11 states across the country. The Houck Agency can find the policy that fits your needs from business health coverage, individual health, home, auto, and long-term health care policies. They have a staff that can take care of financial planning, including retirement and investing. And Barbara Houck has been a realtor for over 35 years, and her contacts helped her buy and sell homes and commercial properties across the state. One stop shop, the Hauk Agency. 801 South Main in Stillwater. Call statewide toll free at 800 543 8588. The Hauk Agency, when experience counts. Eskimo Joe's, famous for its cheese fries, famous for its Joe's Cups, for its Joe's Specials. This place is known for a lot of memories. It's known for a lot of things. And of course, the creator of this business was Stan Clark. He owns it by himself along with his family, his wife. But he didn't always own it by himself. He had a partner. What on earth happened to Steve File? Here's Stan Clark. So... So you mentioned Steve several times. Yes. Now, now Steve's no longer part of the business, right? No, uh, Steve and I were partners for about two and a half years. I bought his half interest in January of 1978. So I've been a sole proprietor ever since. So, you know, my original question was, and again, I've heard some of these stories, but I haven't heard all these. I mean, this is pretty good, pretty new stuff to me, and I know I should probably know some of this stuff as long as I've been here. But I assumed that this was something you almost did as a hobby initially. 
Oh, no. And that oh, no. you were, you know, well, hey, I don't know if I'm going to stay here or not. This is just something I can do while I'm going to school. But this actually all happened after school, and there was never any doubt. With, after two or three months, you realize, man, I'm, I'm, I got something here. We, we've got something here. Right. Now, I, I will say this. <clears throat> Pardon me. I absolutely never saw this as a short-term deal. I, I thought it was something we could work hard and create a good business. Um, Steve was very entrepreneurial, and he did want to move on. Mm -hmm. That was one of the reasons why we didn't stay partners, honestly. He, he wanted to kind of find greener, pre greener pastures, if you will. I felt like we had something that had really had some magic behind it, and I thought we could build the business over, over time and always wanted to. I, I frankly enjoyed working the business more than Steve did. But the main reason that we, that we split up really was he just had, had married and just wanted a different, uh, different lifestyle and didn't want to continue basically to be the tavern owner guy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was very much enjoying that. And, uh, and, was, and, and frankly, I was actualizing it. I mean, I knew I was, I was uh, well received in the role and people liked to come in and, and they liked to see me. And, and I love music. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was so fun. It was like, I always say it was like you're hosting a party every night, you yeah. know, and just, just spinning great tunes and just showing people a good time. It was just, it just really fit my personality, and I, I just enjoyed working it and growing the business. First food was introduced when? Well, we had a little bit of snack food, but we didn't really get into the uh, restaurant business until the drinking age changed in the fall of 83 from 18 to 21. And boy, that was just the watershed event. Yeah. It looked like it was going to shut us down. Back in the day, the Tulsa World and the Tulsa Tribune, the evening paper, were both still, you know, going. Mm -hmm. And I remember the Tulsa Trib came over and they, they took a picture of me and they said, now, wipe that grin off your face. You know, I got to have a hard time getting rid of the grin. <laughs> so we want you to look kind of glib, you know, and, and bummed out. But anyway, their cut line was really clever. It said, uh, New new beer law chills tavern owners. I thought, oh, that's good. That's good. But anyway, uh, you know. But the bottom line was, there was no way we were going to remain viable. When you took the freshmen and the sophomore and the junior junior students out of the mix, at that point, I mean, that was all we had. You know, and we only really had one product. So <clears throat> I finally, I just really after some soul searching, said, man, if I'm going to leverage this trade name and this location. We got to we got to add some product to the mix, and we've got to be able to serve people of all ages. So we opened a small kitchen, and we went from 13 employees to 45 overnight wow. to do even a very simple full service menu. And so, you know, I always like the kid. <clears throat> we got the kitchen open in spring of '84, and uh, it was fun to find out in 1984 that more people actually eat every day than drink every day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, that worked out pretty good. A lot of demand for that. Okay, so food's been introduced. We've we've had the bar side of it. You've got the food side of it. There's obviously the t-shirt sales. There's the marketing side of it. Which did you find yourself true the the business side of it? Just again trying to make sure that everything made sense. What were you most drawn to? Well, I I liked every aspect of it really. You know the the again spinning tunes and just the early days of the bar business was fun. Did you play much? Did you play any other days? No, I didn't. No? I mean, I, I learned to play guitar as a, as a kid, and I loved to sing. Yeah. But I, you know, I didn't really ever do that uh, in, in Joe's. Uh, but until, until the next year, <coughs> pardon me, 1985, our 10th anniversary, I came up with this crazy idea to, um, to write a couple songs about Joe's. I thought, man, you know, if, if I could make a record and it got played on the radio, oh. now that would be shameless self-promotion, <laughs> right? That's kind of my, what I'm known for, I think. So, so, so anyway, um, I went down to the local music store, and a guy named Rick Peel was running the, was running the store. And I went in, I said, hey, man, I, I, I need to buy a guitar. I, you know, I played a little bit when I was a kid, but I want to write some songs about Joe's. He said, really? He said, well, I'll tell you what. I'm in a band, and he said the drummer in the band has, his, uh, has a recording studio in Tulsa. So if you're really serious about that, you let us know. We'll help you out with that. I thought, well, that'd be cool. So I buy the guitar. I go home. I'm kind of clicking around on it. And another buddy uh, named Clyde Cole, 
uh, write some lyrics for me to a song called Last Night at Joe's. <laughs> and I put that one to music, and I thought, that's pretty cool. I think that could maybe work. And so I was feeling pretty good about that. And I, I ran into Rick and Ed Robinson, who was our keyboard player, and Bill Belknap, the drummer, aforementioned drummer, at, and by now I'd opened Stillwater Bay, which and uh, they were hanging out over there late one night. They were, they were having a good time. And they said, so how are you coming on that project? <laughs> I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing too bad. I got one song kind of written. I got some pretty good lyrics. I think I've kind of got a little groove going. I need a B-side. And they said, well, come on over to our place. We'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> knock it out. So I did. I went home with those guys that evening. And within about an hour, we wrote the Juke Joint Shuffle. And I say we, they wrote the Juke Joint Shuffle. And uh, it was just so interesting to watch real musicians sit down and begin to compose and put a few a few riffs together and then a few lyrics together. And before you know it, da -da -da -da, there's a jumping little Juke Joint. Anyway, it's so much fun. And I love that whole creative process. So. Since 1957, the hideaway has been a staple in Stillwater. Times may have changed since the hideaway originally opened, but the great pizza and friendly atmosphere has never wavered. Stop in at 230 South Oblock Street and try one of our specialty pizzas, including the Paradise Pie with Alfredo sauce, chicken, bacon, mushroom, spinach, and fresh tomato. Or for those meat lovers, check out the Big Country featuring pepperoni, bacon, Italian sausage, Canadian bacon, and cheddar cheese. And for a starter, try the famous fried mushrooms. The Hideaway, dine in or call 372-4777 for takeout or delivery. Whether you're looking for a small concert venue like the Bob Childers Gypsy Cafe or a big stage at the Tumbleweeds Calf Fry Festival, America's friendliest college town is going to be rocking this May. Where the flowers are waving and the music will get you swaying. Enjoy a concert in the garden right here at the Botanic Garden at OSU. We can't wait to welcome over 5,000 Olympic athletes competing in nine events and swinging for the gold. Support local farmers, learn about seasonal produce, and discover new fruits and veggies at the Stillwater Farmers Market located at the Prairie Arts Center. Check out the real professionals at the Aggie Cattle Dog Show at the Payne County Expo Center. How can you celebrate National Tourism Week? Pick one of the three round trip flights through Stillwater Regional Airport at flystillwaterok.com. Don't miss a beat in America's friendliest college town. Check out our full listing of events at visitstillwater.org. Kent and Barbara Hauke have been saying they're a one-stop shop for many years. In 1951, the Hauke Agency began insuring Oklahomans and since has expanded to insure people in 11 states across the country. The Hauke Agency can find the policy that fits your needs from business health coverage, individual health, home, auto, and long-term health care policies. They have a staff that can take care of financial planning, including retirement and investing. And Barbara Hauke has been a realtor for over 35 years and her contacts helped her buy and sell homes and commercial properties across the the state. One stop shop, the Hauk Agency. 801 South Main in Stillwater. Call statewide toll free at 800 543 8588. The Hauk Agency, when experience counts. Welcome back once again to TV 3101. We are having so much fun having an opportunity to sit down with Stan Clark and Stan just opening up and telling us just whatever was on his mind. Whatever we asked, he was willing to answer. You know, we got a chance to talk to him about becoming a star as far as being a music star. We talked to, talked to him about a number of other things, but we want to talk about his star moment in Tulsa and we want to talk about the anniversary. When I came to Stillwater, the anniversary was, was a big event. By the end of it, it was a monstrous event, and eventually it kind of went away. Whose decision was that, and why? Go into the studio, record Last Night at Joe's and the Juke Joint Shuffle. We put it out on a 45, 1985, and it was so much fun. I just had a blast with it. We ended up getting airplay on 45 radio stations <laughs> in Oklahoma and Kansas. And I will never forget one Friday afternoon, just before our 
anniversary celebration in Stillwater. I was driving down 15th Street, if you're a, if you're a Tulsa native or know anything about Tulsa, and I hear th my song on the Rainbow Station, KMOD. This Eskimo tradition is still water's own. So come along, baby, help us sing this song, yeah. Every night. And having grown up in, in Oakland, Tulsa, I mean, this is like, I couldn't <laughs> believe it. Yeah. I mean, I, the, the hair on back, my you know, neck is standing up. And while I'm driving along, I see this guy motioning me over. So I pull over and, uh, you know, and he jumps out of his car and he says, I can't believe I just saw you. He said, I'm coming to Stillwater next week, but I have framed one of your original flyers that you put under my dorm room door wow. 10 years ago, and I was going to give it to you. And he handed that to me, and my song's playing on KMOD, and I'm thinking, wow. I mean, I don't know how to explain all that, but that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And it was just one of those moments, I'll just, I'll never forget that. Well, how could you? I mean, again, to take the concept to see it come to fruition in a decade, and then to have someone who, would, who keeps those, right? <laughs> who keeps those? Be, that, I mean, that, that, that's all incredible. Did that begin to lead to the whole uh, uh, yearly anniversary concept? Well, it was part of it. it. The tenth was really the year that the celebration began to spill outside of, of uh, the, the bar and into the street, for sure. In fact, the very next year, the crowd was really, really big, and we hadn't really made any arrangements or, or plans for it. And uh, I remember, I remember this like as yesterday. So I see the chief of police and the city. Uh, manager at the time, Carl Weinog and Norm McNichol. And I see him trying to get around the corner at Knobloch and come down L. <laughs> and it took him about 30 minutes <laughs> to get that little half a block. And by the time they get there, I'm standing on the front porch, I'm getting this. <laughs> and I can't remember if Carl was driving and Norm was doing that or if Norm was driving and Carl was doing that. But one way or the other, yes, sir. And I'm down the stairs to the front door, gentlemen. And I'm in the car with them, and they're going, what is going on here, you know? I said, hey, man, I don't know, you know, a lot of people showed up. Uh, but anyway, that was the beginning of the anniversary celebration. That became such a big event, and we, we worked closely then with the city of Stillwater and the OSU Police Department to plan a safe and fun event. And boy, that was, that was, that was quite a deal. From 85 to 93 was the window in which we had those big celebrations, and and they, they grew to be really significant. I was there at 90, 91, 92, and 93. Yeah. Uh, I know how big those things <laughs> yeah. were. They were huge. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, to say it was a Joe's weekend is kind of a, a bit of a push because you really only got to the peripheral of Joe's. You were not getting to Joe's. You might have this place, you know, and it really is amazing. When you think about it, I mean, you had created in that, I mean, one of the largest events outside of OSU football in our entire community. Well, you're, you're exactly right. Uh, there's no doubt nothing else drew people here like that event did, um, except for OSU football. And uh, it was, it was something else. Sometimes not even that, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, it was really, really amazing. I mean, you can only imagine what that felt like. It was so heartwarming. To, and, and it really became a reunion mm -hmm. for OSU alums mm -hmm. from any era you know, if they had if they had come to Oklahoma State, and especially if they'd come since '75, once we were in business, you know, it it really was quite a reunion. And uh, in all modesty, it kind of made Eskimo Joe's a household word around the state of Oklahoma because um, back in the day, um, the broadcast television stations from both Tulsa and Oklahoma City would bring satellite trucks. That was kind of the way it was done back then, and uh, and they all did. They showed up because there were so many people. It was an event to cover in the middle of summer, and uh, so, yeah, it kind of made Joe's a household word. Well, and the fact that, again, it was in the summer, that's the other key, is, yeah. I mean, getting people to be that active, it's usually during the fall, during the sports season in this right. community. Yeah. And the fall, now, did it, and I know there were, there were at times some issues there. It wasn't, uh, you know, it, some things that led to its demise, if you will. But ultimately, instead of growing it and changing it and finding a way to continue, is it just too much work? Well, I don't know if it was too much work. I will admit it was, it was so big, um, it was a little disconcerting. You yeah. know, here I am. I'm a hospitality guy. I am Mr. <laughs> Fun. 
and uh, you know working closely with the police departments and and hearing all the all the backstories that the things that they were concerned about in a crowd that size it, it made me pretty nervous you know I had a lot going on by then and I I did kind of wonder if it was if it might not be you know kind of pushing the envelope and maybe if it weren't better I mean I honestly I I, I pulled the plug on it. I mean it was my choice I was not it was not um, it was not an edict the city of Stillwater didn't tell me to um, I just I, I just felt in my heart of hearts was probably the right thing to do at the time how many showed up in 94 anyway <laughs> <laughs> you know not as many as you'd think uh, but in 93, the last year we did it, the police estimated that 74,000 people participated over three nights. Wow. And Saturday night, the last night of the event, 37,000 was their estimate of the crowd. So that was, that was solid people from the Bartlett Center on the west all the way to Duck Street. And all the parking lots in between, and I mean, you know what it's like. Yeah, it, was it was like the walk around <laughs> putting up one block area. <laughs> Whether you're looking for a small concert venue like the Bob Childers Gypsy Cafe or a big stage at the Tumbleweeds Calf Fry Festival, America's friendliest college town is going to be rocking this May. Where the flowers are waving and the music will get you swaying. Enjoy a concert in the garden right here at the Botanic Garden at OSU. We can't wait to welcome over 5,000 Olympic athletes competing in nine events and swinging for the gold. Support local farmers, learn about seasonal produce, and discover new fruits and veggies at the Stillwater Farmers Market located at the Prairie Arts Center. Check out the real professionals at the Aggie Cattle Dog Show at the Payne County Expo Center. How can you celebrate National Tourism Week? Pick one of the three round trip flights through Stillwater Regional Airport at flystillwaterok.com. Don't miss a beat in America's friendliest college town. Check out our full listing of events at visitstillwater.org. To our neighbors and friends, we come to you today to let you know what's on our hearts. Because you're the reason what we do is so much more meaningful than a job. The reason we believe in the power of investing in tomorrow and the power of community. So this is simply thank you. As we step boldly into a time of growth and change, consider this our promise that every investment in our hospital is an investment in our communities. Have you tried TS Fork yet? They have great meals being served weekly on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. But I want to tell you about their incredible Sunday lunches. Every Sunday from 11 to 2, you can drop in at TS Fork at White Barn Estates for a lunch like Grandma used to make. The menu changes weekly, but it includes selections like fried chicken, roast beef, meatloaf, and all the fixings. No reservations needed, special pricing for kids, and a great home-cooked meal at TS Fork. And while you're there, check out the gift shop with Made in Oklahoma products and items you won't find any Anywhere else. Learn more at tsfork.com. Well, that's the end of another fun conversation with Stan Clark, but we're still not done. I wanted to talk to Stan about being a family man, talk a little bit about his faith. I want to talk about the number of things that, that are going on personally, but also, will there ever be another third amigo? All of that and more coming up next time on TV 3101.